Hey, well, hello everyone out there on YouTube land. I hope that everybody is doing well and staying safe and, um, you know, doing the things that God has ordained you to do, <laughs> whatever that is. Amen. So I wanted to come on. I was just, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing busy work, you know, dehydrating, cleaning or whatever it is that I'm doing, um, organizing, whatever, I like to compile a little playlist um, you know, a little playlist, you know, my documentaries and old movies are my favorite or whatever. So like, I like to put together, you know, these documentaries or whatever, and just kind of listen to them different documentaries. Cause I love history. History is my, my main, uh, my main boyfriend. <laughs> so I, I really love history. I love historical events, historic, you know, people, places, things, and all of that. So anyway, you know, so I I like, you know, listen to those different things when I'm, you know, doing busy work or whatever. So I was listening to something. That I don't think it was a documentary, but I think it was some, it was crime, uh, related to crime. And uh, they were narrating a, a scene, I guess, of somebody that was uh, unfortunately murdered. But they were talking about how the person fought for their life, you know. And I was like, wow. And I don't, I guess it was the Spirit of God that says, you know, when people um, um, assault you with a gun, you don't have an opportunity to fight for your life or to fight, period. And I was like, wow, that is so true. You know, how cowardly, you know, that people go around uh, brandishing and, 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 and killing people with guns, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, those uh, on the street, you know, people, uh, innocent victims and, and, or whomever, what, you know, how cowardly, you know, or, you know, what is that, that you, you know, you can't fight someone with your hands or, you know, or how about not fighting at all? And let's talk about this. Okay. Let's discuss the matter at hand and work it out, you know, verbally or whatever, you know? So <laughs> I was like, yeah, that is so terrible. People going around killing people with guns, carrying guns. I mean, you know, and ch ch so many children. This was a, and, I, and I'm not sure of the statistics, but this is the first time I, because, you know, I don't really involve myself in a lot of news. What I hear is what I hear. What I see is what I see um, by happenstance or by the Holy Ghost or whatever. So, but this year I noticed that this, so so many children, I don't know, in my uh, neck of the woods I'm, I'm speaking about, were murdered, you know, by gun, um, gun violence, um, you know, just wherever they were, you know, in their homes or playing outside or whatever, in the car with their parents and or, for, you know, whatever, you know, so many children of various ages infants on up were killed murdered by gun violence guys this year in my city and i was like wow that was that was pretty something that was pretty something else right there our prayer team was really on that one um so anyway but yeah you know i remember growing up i fought i was something else growing up guys but you probably could gather that by who i am <laughs> No, but seriously, I, I fought, you know, I fought, I had a few fights uh, growing up, whether it was in our neighborhood or in school, I did fight, you know, um, uh, up until I was a teen, uh, I think, so, um, so yeah, I did fight, but nary a time, and if you guys know what nary means, if you're from, if you have southernness in you. <laughs> Nary a time, which is never, nary a time do I ever recall using any type of weapon, weaponry to fight anyone. Never did we even think of such a thing. And, you know, we were friends. We made up and became friends or whatever. And, but, it, you know, this was children's stuff, child's play, foolishness and whatever. But... You know, but to fight, I mean, but to use brandish a gun and fight somebody or whatever. And I know knives were involved, like, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, growing up like that. 
there were, you know, people would would stab you or people did carry knives and stuff like that. But the way they carry guns now, I mean, once you shoot somebody or kill, I mean, the person is gone. I mean, if you're, why, why even, even pol with the police, you know, I was, you know, there are some other documentaries I was <laughs> watching. I was just like so bowled over and uh, 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 assaulted in my spirit by the things that some of the, um, like chairpersons of unions and chief of police and uh you know people of uh, in high, higher rankings of uh in police departments or uh, uh i can't think of what you call it and this is no offense to everybody because we know that everybody is not like this or doesn't have this mentality unfortunately you become grouped and labeled into that uh um department because you're there though uh, but yeah they were saying all sorts of things uh it's i just you know me i don't understand that because in canada this type of thing does not happen it's not like this but it's crazy because you shoot somebody to kill them somebody you know just running from you you shoot them Somebody that does not have a gun, you shoot them to stop them? What? With gun? With, with a bullet that will kill them ultimately? No, that's ridiculous. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not against maybe a taser or even that's, you know, violent. But it's, if you need to stop someone, you know, disable someone or something, I'm not against, I don't know. I don't know about rubber bullets or something like that. I don't know. I don't know about any of that. Let me just shut up and say anything about. I'm not gonna say anything about any of those because I, I all of it is still uh, inhumane. When somebody is running from you, and and they don't have a weapon, even if they had a weapon, if they're running from you, why are you and and, and why are you shooting them? You know. I mean, this is not the wild, wild west. I mean, we've come so far that there's so many other ways and manners in which, and you're you're not in harm. Your 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 all your fellow officers or whomever are not also in any danger either. You know, the community. You know, you might use those things as excuses, but. But it was just funny the things that I heard, and I don't mean funny, haha. -ha, I mean funny, peculiar. Um, that the people were saying how you know the, the excuses that they were the lame excuses that they would be coming up with in order to kill people to stop people um, from running. You know what is what if they get away they get away, but you don't have to kill them. I mean, if because I would prefer the person come to justice myself. Like. You know, when I say justice, I mean through the courts versus be dead because that person is a redeemable soul as well because we don't know who's going to accept Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior and who's not going to. So that what that's why we whether whoever they are, even even if they seem like the most unredeemable soul, because it's not our business as far as that is concerned. We we still minister the word of God to them. We minister Christ Jesus to them, nonetheless. But let me get back to what I was going for, that people are cowards. If you carry a gun and you just shoot aimlessly and just into crowds and all of that, you know, or if you are, you know, have a, a you know, like a row with someone or disagreement with someone and your 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 action is your your action is to go and kill somebody, shoot somebody, that's cowardly and it's wrong. We can talk about it. And even if you don't want to talk about it, just forget about it. There's nothing that somebody has done to you that's so terrible that you have to kill them. Nothing. There's nothing so terrible and horrible that somebody has done to you that you have to kill them. That's cowardly. It's cowardly. It's weak. It's immature. You need to grow up. Okay? You need to grow up. Seriously. You need to get your life together. Because that's a wrong, wrong, very wrong thing to do. Okay? So my prayer is that 
you know, people will stop doing this because it's like, and then I also look at parenting because I know we don't want, I mean, I'm not one to blame parents for everything that happens because I'm also a parent and a grandparent. And I know people have blamed me for things. And I under also know that as, as parents, we cannot control everything. We can do our best to put in the child and or children what we can and have them in good, clean environments and, you know, try to make sure that they're well-rounded individuals. Um, but sometimes something else goes off in that child. Some, for whatever reason, there are many things. There's the child has been molested and or touched by someone. Some violence has been perpetrated upon them. Maybe they got involved with drugs. They were reading the wrong materials and became something. Watching the wrong films. Uh, 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 mentored by the wrong community leaders and or teachers or whomever. Um, you know, all of the, you know, there is, uh, you know, a variety of, you know, um, there are a variety of things that could have happened, you know, to the child or whatever. Um, but but I do believe that some parents are not on their job. Some parents are really not on their job. You know, they're, because a lot of people, and I see it so often, many people are so wrapped up in their relationships and or getting a relationship or coming out of a relationship that they don't have time for their children. Your primary goal, these children did not ask to be brought into this world. Our primary goal, if we are parents, is to nurture and love and take care of that child. That's it. You can't be worried about having boyfriends and girlfriends and, and all of this other kind of stuff and trying to go out to bars and clubs and do this and trying to make up this and hey, put hair on this and put an eyelash on that and put a, 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 a pair of jeans on a, a big bottom or, you know, your big booty and all that. Forgive me for saying booty. I'm just saying it because I want you to know what I'm talking about. You know, all of these different things, you know, we you got to put it into the children. And if you don't have it, you need to make sure that you surround that child with somebody, some things that can help that child, you know, if it's grandparents, community, it's somebody, you know, you've got to do it, you know, but having boyfriends and trying to have relationships, boyfriends and girlfriends, whatever, and trying to have all these relationships and not and just leaving the child to just fly in the wind and just raise itself and, and all of that is wrong. I don't care what your upbringing is, where you come from, you got to take care of that. You got to put into them something good you know yep you do you really really do and you must do it you know so anyway i just want to say that that really uh struck a nerve when i heard that about they said you know a person really fought for their life and i was like huh that's you know but but if they were you know if someone had a gun on on them or shot them then or the other you know the, the opponent or whatever the other person had a gun then you can't fight for your life you know you can't fight against a gun. You know what I mean? So so what are, you, what are you saying? The one that has a gun, what are you saying? You know, in essence, what are you saying? Yeah. So anyway, I know a thousand topics and whatever, but hope this is something that we can think on, chew on, mull over, and pray about. If you pray, there are things that we should pray about. And, and, and also approach different people on the street as you see them or in the community wherever you see them of course prayerfully uh, approach them don't just approach people because uh, yeah they could be wild mm -hmm. but there are some people that the lord will lead you to for certain reasons you know so it's instill that hope instill that seed of hope into them and let that flourish and grow so that god can get a good harvest you know touch people's lives, especially during this time. Of course, this is a blessed time. A lot of people are moaning and groaning and whatever. This is a very blessed time. And if you do not come up 
or uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I can't think of the word I want to use. Um, uh, if, but if you don't come up or um, are not, if you don't benefit from this COVID-19, you're doing something wrong. You are doing something wrong. And you need to change your mind, change your mentality and, you know, renew and refresh your mind. Because even though situations are bad and, you know, whatever, or seemingly bad, there's a lot of good that's coming out of this COVID right now. There's a lot of good that's coming out of this pandemic, you know. So anyway. I just need be blessed. I pray that you hear what I'm saying. Hopes that something was said that could help you or help somebody else anyway. So anyway, love you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.